A cordial greeting. Today is Sunday, August 17, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. At the time of recording this video, it is 7.15 in the morning, local time in the Northeast Caribbean, where the circulation of Hurricane Aaron is located to the north of Puerto Rico. So in this video I will talk about the updated forecast for track and intensity. In addition, we will talk about the additional rain that could affect Puerto Rico and the northern Lesser Antilles between today and tomorrow. And in the second part of the video I will talk about a new tropical wave that has chances of cyclonic development over the next seven days as it moves across the tropical Atlantic and is expected to reach parts of the Eastern Caribbean by the end of this week. Let's zoom into the infrared satellite animation of Hurricane Aaron. In the 5 a.m. advisory, the National Hurricane Center indicates that Hurricane Aaron has maximum sustained winds of 125 miles per hour. That means it is a Category 3 hurricane. Over the last 12 hours it has been weakening after yesterday reaching Category 5 with maximum sustained winds of 160 miles per hour as it passed just north of the Virgin Islands. But just as forecast, a restructuring of the circulation center and an eyewall replacement cycle began last night, and this has helped the cyclone lose intensity in terms of maximum sustained winds. That is why the maximum sustained winds have decreased to 125 miles per hour. However, during this process, the circulation is becoming larger, and this is normal in eye wall replacement cycles. Once this process is complete, it is very likely that Hurricane Aaron will strengthen again as it moves northwest. In the Doppler radar animation from Puerto Rico we can see the circulation center located about 150 miles north of Puerto Rico. We see some outer bands, or what we know as the tail of the hurricane, continuing to bring heavy downpours across the Virgin Islands and southern and eastern Puerto Rico. This rain will continue affecting the local region throughout the day, and power outages will persist. These problems are expected to last at least until Monday. In this animation we can also see where the current eyewall is located and where the new eyewall is developing in the process we know as eyewall replacement. This means that once that process is complete, Hurricane Aaron is expected to have a much larger eye. In fact, in the projected infrared satellite imagery from the American model, we can see that this cycle may be completed within the next 24 hours, and between Wednesday and Thursday the eye of Hurricane Aaron could have a diameter of over 100 miles when it passes between North Carolina and the island of Bermuda. Here we can also see that the hurricane strengthens once it completes that cycle, since atmospheric conditions will be very favorable, at least through Tuesday. So the weakening of maximum sustained winds is due only to the eye wall replacement cycle, and as this process is completed, the hurricane will continue to expand its circulation as well as the reach of tropical storm force winds. As we can see in this image, they remain north of Puerto Rico, although yesterday some tropical storm force gusts affected the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Fortunately, hurricane force winds and sustained tropical storm force winds remained over the Atlantic waters. As Aaron continues on this west-northwest track, the extent of tropical storm force winds will begin to increase. That is why a tropical storm warning has been issued for the Turks and Caicos Islands. See in the next animation that Hurricane Aaron will be moving over increasingly warmer sea surface temperatures, reaching 30 degrees Celsius when located northeast of the Bahamas. This is precisely why we anticipate it will remain a major hurricane for the next three to five days. And although there have been some westward adjustments in its track, still note that the models project it will remain over open Atlantic waters, passing just northeast of the Bahamas and in about four days between North Carolina and the island of Bermuda. Looking at intensity model projections, all of them keep Hurricane Aaron as a Category 3 or Category 4 hurricane for the next four days. This is also reflected in the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Look at the track forecast where the circulation center is not projected to directly impact the Turks and Caicos Islands nor the Bahamas. The island of Bermuda and the eastern United States remain outside the cone of uncertainty. Also note that it's projected to continue as a major hurricane at least through Wednesday morning. Let's look at the latest projections from global models. Starting with the American model, it shows Hurricane Aaron strengthening as it moves north and passes between North Carolina and Bermuda on Wednesday night. In addition, the European model agrees with this forecast. It also has Aaron strengthening at least through Tuesday night and eventually moving between North Carolina and Bermuda. Meanwhile, the German model is much more aggressive with this strengthening. In this case, the model projects that Hurricane Aaron could once again be a Category 5 hurricane Tuesday night as it moves over the very warm sea surface temperatures east of Florida. So this is also a possibility, but fortunately it will remain over the Atlantic waters without directly impacting land areas. Now then, as it moves parallel to the U.S. East Coast, strong surf will affect the entire East Coast of the United States, the Bahamas, and Bermuda. So caution is advised on beaches and coasts as dangerous rip currents and coastal erosion are expected. Let's look at the latest rainfall accumulation projections for the next four days. For Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, 
Rain should continue between today, Sunday, and through Monday. These outer bands from Hurricane Aaron could bring an additional 2 to 5 inches of rain, so flooding will continue over the next 48 hours. For the Dominican Republic, not much rain is anticipated, with the worst-case scenario being 50 to 75 millimeters in some eastern and northeastern areas of the country. Meanwhile, looking at wind gust projections for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, there is still the chance that some tropical storm force gusts will affect the region today, similar to what we experienced last night. As Hurricane Aaron moves northwest and grows larger, sustained tropical storm force winds between 40 to 55 miles per hour will affect the Turks and Caicos Islands. These tropical storm force winds should move over this area tonight, Sunday, through Tuesday morning. By Wednesday and Thursday, as the hurricane moves between North Carolina and Bermuda, its circulation will be extremely large, so some tropical storm force gusts could affect the island of Bermuda and also some coastal areas of the eastern United States. So it is possible that some tropical storm watches or warnings will be issued. Meanwhile, the heaviest rain should remain offshore, although Bermuda could receive 2 to 3 inches of rain associated with this system. Now let's move into the tropical Atlantic, where we have a new tropical wave that just moved off Africa and looks quite strong. Conditions will be favorable for cyclonic development as it moves westward. That's why the National Hurricane Center has marked the tropical Atlantic area with a 20% chance of cyclonic development over the next seven days. This wave will be moving through a favorable environment for development. The passage of a Kelvin wave with a moist atmosphere could give this system the opportunity to become the next cyclone of the season. In this case, likely with a track farther west compared to Hurricane Aaron. Looking at the projections from the ensemble members of the American model, about 20 to 30% of them develop a tropical depression by midweek. And although in general it shows a fairly westward track, there is still a lot of uncertainty about where exactly that circulation center will consolidate. So at least for now it looks like conditions won't be as favorable as we saw with Hurricane Aaron. And that's precisely why the National Hurricane Center keeps the chances of development at 20%. Also, the European model members see the development of one or two additional cyclones in the next five to six days. In this case, 30 to 40% of them develop a tropical depression as it moves near or over the Northeast Caribbean by the end of this week. Meanwhile, the members of Google's artificial intelligence model also see the possible development of a tropical depression east of the Lesser Antilles Thursday night, and eventually during next weekend taking a west-northwest track. But again, there is great uncertainty in what its future track might be. Looking at the global models, the American model has a tropical depression passing south of Puerto Rico Saturday morning. Meanwhile, the European model shows the development of a tropical depression passing northeast of the Caribbean Friday night. And in the case of the German model, it shows a weak tropical storm approaching the northern Lesser Antilles Thursday night. The UK model has a weak tropical storm passing very close to the northern Lesser Antilles. So regarding this tropical wave, I suspect that at 8 a.m. the National Hurricane Center will maintain the chances of cyclonic development at 20%. We'll have to see what the model projections show this afternoon. It is very likely that this afternoon or evening I will record a new video to update what is happening in the tropics. Before I go, I would like to ask you to like this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. Well, that's all for now. Let's hope our followers in Puerto Rico and the northern Lesser Antilles are in a safe place and that the flooding hasn't been too severe. See you later.